Before we go into PayPal, we should talk about a specific person that made this all possible. XYZ Eva. You might have seen her name around recently, and that's because she's been poning everything from RabbitR1 to my own Notion page. In fact, I was one of the first people that she pwned by finding a way to get into my Notion and DMing me back when she had, what, 20 followers? It's been so cool to see her grow and succeed in taking down all of these things that I hate. One of which, of course, is PayPal. <sighs> I have been to hell and back with this service, and knowing it is as bad is great. And sure, we see Eva in chat now, or they're going to find sources for me talking shit on Firebase as per usual. But what we're here for is all of the stuff associated with PayPal, which I'm sure they're grabbing more sources. I'll wait for them to do that. And as they do, we'll go through what they've already given me. This wonderful tweet. PayPal has not fixed a critical vulnerability being exploited in the wild for two weeks now. This is a vulnerability allowing anyone to do chargeback fraud on any PayPal account. This fraud was found being exploited on Pirate Software, the tech creator, if you don't already know him. I will release the details tomorrow if PayPal takes no action. After disputing the case, PayPal said to Pirate Software that this chargeback request to dispute it was invalid because the item doesn't have seller protection, except the vulnerability allows you as like the user to create fake items that don't have seller protection. So there's no way for it to have seller protections. So if you're curious what the hell is going on here, people like Pirate Software and myself and a lot of other creators have a PayPal business or even personal for sales account that lets people buy things from us directly. However, this exploit allows for any user to on the fly create a new item. So instead of buying an item from me that I have listed with specific, I don't know, qualities to it, properties that I can assign like seller protections, the person who is filing these fake charges can do such without me having control of those properties. I could go more in depth, but I want to show you what this actually looks like. Thankfully, good friend Pirate Software here, Thor, has already done that for us. So let's take a look at what Thor has to say. Injection. So effectively, the way that this works is somebody created a fake cart item, pulled a tip to Pirate Software, and they paid $1 into it to see if it worked found out it did work, and then they paid $100 into it, and then charged that back and said that they were ripped off. That's insane, dude. And they used this exploit to do chargeback fraud against me. That's wild, dude. I don't think there's anything I could do about that other than be like, PayPal, fix this shit. Yeah. So to be very clear, this exploiter did a fake $1 charge on a fake item to pirate software to make sure it worked. And when they realized it did, they did a $100 one and then reported that as fraud to PayPal, which got them their money back and it cost him additional money. He even specified on Twitter in the replies here, they took back the $100 used in the exploitation of the vulnerability and they tacked on an extra $20 for fees associated with the chargeback. We lost the case within 48 hours. That's just absurdity. And honestly, like unironically suing them for causing you financial damages, it wouldn't be a fun case, as this person says, but like you'd have a real case here, almost certainly. It would be a hell of a case. And since they're not going to pay your legal fees, it's not worth pursuing. And you could make the argument they probably have something in the terms that makes it even harder. But this is just absurd. You can use this on non-business accounts. You can also arbitrarily increase the amount that the chargeback fee is. The seller has also tried multiple times to retry the same exploit against Thor. Not surprising. And just to prove this is real, I'm going to open up my email because Eva introduced this bug to me by doing this to me. You've got cash. This email confirms that you've received a payment for a dollar from Eva. PayPal shopping cart contents. Item name, a totally legitimate item. Quantity one, total one dollar. They made a fake purchase. I don't even have a PayPal account on this email and they were still able to do that. That's insane. That's actually insane. And the potential for this to do legitimate damages is surreal. And don't worry, that's not actually her address. She's already confirmed that much. But the fact that this is a legitimate thing is just crazy to me. And I cannot believe PayPal is ignoring it. Look at the item number. I saw it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you made a good fake item. <sighs> this is insanity. I, I can't believe PayPal is just quietly ignoring this. But also not too surprised. Oh, this is a good thing PayPal always loves to do. I got screwed this back in the day because I had a PayPal account that I opened when I was 16 and shouldn't have because it's 18 plus. They're strict about that. And then when they realized when I was like 23 that I had opened my account when I was below 18, they closed it with money in it when I was in my 20s. I had to make a new PayPal account and never got access to the money they stole from me because they claimed the account was fraudulent and broke their terms of service because it was opened when I wasn't 18 yet. Even though I was over 18 at that point, I was, it'd been like seven years. So yeah, I'm sure there's some legal reasons why for this, but they're bullshit because as this person says, Stripe's not doing any of these things. I have my own gripes with Stripe, particularly around tax handling stuff, but man, at least it works and doesn't screw you in these ways. It's insane. If you opened your PayPal when you were under 18, I would highly recommend opening a new one sooner than later, just because you might get hit with these types of things. It's ugh, nuts, like terrifying. Be very careful with these things.
The thing that makes this even more dangerous is since you can send to non-existent accounts, you can charge back from non-existent accounts, which literally steals money from PayPal, the company with no precautions. Yeah, I would imagine that at least at this point in time, this falls within their margin for error. But uh, yeah, if they were to actually get fucked by this, that would be an interesting change for them. Apparently, they have actual teen accounts now, which is even worse. God, that's terrifying. Yeah, their lawyers are going to have a really good time, and I... I'll be sure to update the comments in the description if I hear from their lawyers too, because uh, PayPal is a little bit litigious. And being that I'm running a lot of my business through it, it'd be really, really bad if I lost my PayPal account. The long paragraph, it's even sillier. PayPal's Venmo required me to close my account and create a brand new account because you cannot convert a teen account to a normal account. However, they locked my teen account, so I have to get my mom to send them personal information to unlock the teen account and then close it. I hate PayPal, but it's so needed because bank transfers suck in the US. Yep. All of this is true. Very painful, but very true. <sighs> I just use Apple Pay and it's mostly worked, but yeah, it's insane. So here's what HackerOne did after I publicly made a mess out of it. They said I violated the terms of HackerOne because I made a tweet about it without revealing any details. The problem with this is the only reason the vulnerability got attention and someone from PayPal saw the tweet and escalated, that's when PayPal cared. They didn't care previously and it was obviously low priority. The standard duration in the industry for public disclosure is two weeks. It had been two weeks. I gave them extra time and still hadn't revealed full details. Yeah, I will say like I, I appreciate the HackerOne policy of you only get the payout if it's not disclosed publicly because it incentivizes like good behavior. But when they don't do anything about it and it hit that two week disclosure window, which I'm sure PayPal claims they have a different window. Everyone likes to, but two weeks is more than reasonable for security issues like this. It sucks that you being the one to go public with it got that axed. My bet would be that if Pirate Software was the one to go public with it, they would fix it and then not credit your disclosure at all anyways. So I don't even know if there's a workaround here. I was going to say maybe in the future have someone else be the one to tweet it, but uh, also a uh, Got more context from Eva. It's not specifically for the in the wild disclosures. Good to know. Yeah, uh, terrifying. I can't believe they're like this, but that's PayPal. Yeah, at the very least acknowledging it within two weeks would be nice. And now we're going from PayPal being rough to PayPal quite possibly violating the law and causing legitimate chargeback issues. Because chargebacks, it's not just they get the money back from the transaction that occurred. They get more. They get a fee. Not the person who did the chargeback. They just get their money back. But the payment providers, like part of how the credit card mafia world works, I use my Amex card to buy something. And then I say it was fraudulent and I charge it back. I get my money back. But then the credit card provider charges a fee on top to whoever the merchant was. So they don't just give me my $100 back. They have to pay a fee to the credit card processor and provider to push it through that way. Eva lost a 1K bug bounty payment in PayPal. It's been a pain to receive bug bounties because PayPal's real the only way for you to be able to do oh yeah that's obnoxious i am so sorry is this exploit fixed nope it is not that's why we're talking about it because this just hit pirate software a few days ago and still has not been resolved so yeah <sighs> i hope me making a video doesn't signal boost this too much but as we saw here with uh his short that already 59,000 likes let's just look at his channel and see how many views that has because that must have been recent yeah that's a million plays on his short already so this is now public information i would hope paypal responds now but uh it's PayPal. So who knows if they'll even bother because uh, PayPal is not particularly great. I hope that this makes that clear. I hope you can better understand why PayPal terrifies me. I could go on a long rant about the UI and how half of it looks like it's from the early 2000s, but I don't even want to cover that because right now I am just concerned about this exploit. Please, PayPal, respond and fix this. This is unacceptable. Ugh, peace.